Until July here, I wanted to knock out a video uh, for a coach in North Carolina. Uh, the team that we are reviewing is a team in purple, and that's a team that we coached this past summer. Um, and then the team in the back is the opponent. Uh, I think there's a lot of good points in here, and we're just going to play it, and then I will comment. Not a great approach, but you know, no mistakes. Hit the ball at the opponent's block. Uh, has the lowest correlation for uh, hitting mistakes. So, you know, get it in. Good tough serve. It goes back to our core philosophy, serve tough and serve in. Boom. Now I think this is a great opportunity. You'll see a few things happened here. Number one, uh, nice tough serve, got a free ball. And then our player passed it underhand. So they did a good job of taking out our setter, but the non-setter number nine played the ball underhand. Right there. And I think that's a very important thing. Play it safe, play it underhand. It goes back to our culture. So our culture, let's go back to it, is serve the ball tough, serve the ball in. Non-setters, play it safe, play it underhand. Also, uh, as an attacker, one of the best places to attack is to attack the block because there's a very low correlation to uh, your hitting percentage going down. Nice hit to area one. Very good to see. Nice. Looking pretty good. I like everything I'm seeing. <laughs> I want to also point out one thing too. I really like this here. Nice and calm. And I just want you guys to watch this coach here. One's running around doing a bad job. The other one standing still and staying calm. I actually had a coach written up this past week for not standing during matches, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Um, the Athletic director would want the, wanted the coach to stay in, standing the entire match. If you look at the best coaches in the world, like Phil Jackson, John Wooden, name them, they want to stay calm. So, good job. Good job, Charles. Ooh. Okay, now this for me is a real problem. Uh, let me just back that up just a little bit. Okay, so on this team here, number 13, our outside hitter is our best attacker. And the problem I have is she is playing defense and a wing up defense. Okay, and the team is playing a perimeter defense. You can see everyone here is on the perimeter. Perimeter, perimeter perimeter except for Jamie who is playing a wing up and the problem I have with that I'm not sure if Charles you're doing this on purpose is Jamie's our best hitter so her coming in wing up takes her out from being an effective hitter so I instead want her standing back here playing defense there and either have the setter step up or play a shallow six if you need to defend that okay uh, Jamie, also come on, look, she's going up to hit and look at your hands. That's terrible defense. So you can do better than that. Boom. Okay. So again, if you're going to be going up on a wing up defense, make sure you have your hands up and you're ready to go. Oh, okay. This I have a problem with. Let me just back up a little bit. Notice the set is starting position. They're standing here. The setter should be starting here or moving back to here. It's a great three point pass. And because the set is still in the wrong position, it creates a lot of 
commotion for us and she has to turn and set a very obvious set. So don't do this setter, please. Okay, nice attack. Um, you know, I know this girl's a young freshman coming in, but again, no errors. Hitting into the meat of the court, there's only one blocker up. I like the tempo of the set. And going after the block, boom, you got a kill. Okay, now this is an interesting sequence for me. I think you're going to like this. All you coaches are going to be pulling out your hair like I was when I saw this. Okay, very first play. Oh, nice serve. Good jump float serve. Ace. He's awesome. Okay, so, you know, uh, it goes back to our philosophy. Serve tough, serve in. The best area to serve often is area one. And receive an ace. Who do you guys think she's going to serve next? Obviously, she's going to serve the person that she just aced. Correct? Let's watch it. Going to area one. She would never serve down the line. To, wait. Oh, wait. She just served the Libra. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That's weird. After serving an ace to someone, you ace them again. Okay. Let's watch what happens. Free ball. Okay. Now, this is disturbing for me. I thought this was very interesting. Easy free ball. Okay. Okay. Now, Setter, in this situation, this is an opportunity. I want to try and establish our middle attack. We are yet to set the middle one ball. So you can run a back two in this, okay, and still have an effective offense. I would like to see you establish the middle. What started happening now is you set Jamie every single ball outside, and Jamie is only hitting, so she's going to start getting blocks in. If you had run a nice back set right here, boom. Oh, let me get my little circle. Uh, I think you would have had some real problems in this blockers with now not being able to set up on her. But I think it's a good attack by Jamie. She gets a little lucky off the tape. Okay, hit away from the block. That's good. Okay, so she served two different people. So she aced the person in area one, then she served the Libra. So she's obviously going to serve either area one or five because she scored a point in both of them, correct? Let's check it out. <laughs> okay, I'm sure you're laughing with you. She just served area six. So she served every single one of the back row players. I think she's trying to confuse them. Okay, got lucky, good pass. Now, this is interesting for me. Again, Jamie, you're playing almost a wing up defense. Play a perimeter, get a little further back. Notice your hands are down low. Okay, and this, if you actually watch it in slow motion, there's a little bit of a mistiming issue with the middle blocker. Okay, so block is on these high sets. You want to jump after the hitter. So your hands are coming down right there after the blocker, after the ball's already been hit. Look, it's coming over your hands. I like number nine, the freshman. Great hit position. Jamie, you're playing wing up defense right here. And look at your hands. Your hands are not up in the sky. Okay, so as a result... You should be playing perimeter and be back here, okay? And if you guys want to play a wing up, have either your libero, I mean your libero, or your set and move up. Okay, questions? Hope that's easy. Okay, boom, another mistake, easy point. Okay, now, Charles, this is where I think, as a coach, you should be coming in and making these adjustments. Now... I don't know what you're looking at. I think the team's playing pretty well so far. But these are the adjustments coaches need to be looking for. Two points right there. Uh, hit into area four. And both times Jamie missed it. Also, I think that's a bad strategy playing a wing up on Jamie. Jamie should be playing uh, wide perimeter so she's ready to hit. Okay. I don't like this. I don't like this line. I want my players in a straight line. So I would like um, Delaney stepping up here a little bit so that we have a better pass. Also stops any scenes from happening. Okay. And you notice they're starting to fight. They're not sure whose ball that is. Okay. And that's because of that seam created there. Okay. It's a pretty good pass. Now, at this stage, I am sure the setter is definitely going to set the middle. Look, we've got a nice two 
we worked really hard on running it too. You can see this outside blocker is already pulled to the left. And so there's a perfect opportunity to run it to attack. We worked really hard with this middle during the summer to run a great two. And she was bouncing balls. Oh, not running a two. Now, as a result, we're going to have a huge setup block. I'm sure Jamie, she's been hitting great. And I'm sure she's going to kill this ball. Oh, no. So again, I think that goes back to setting. Now, what's interesting for me after this attack is look at the holes on the opponent's court. There is a big, gigantic hole right there in the middle. What's air between area one and six, plus there's a nice big donut in the middle of the court. Nice covering. Very nice covering. Okay. So what I want to do now is see my Libero, as well as Delaney, my other defensive specialist, coming in and talking to Jamie. Now, did you see either of them talk to Jamie? Neither of them were like, hey, hey, Jamie, there's a gigantic hole in the middle. You've hit five balls already, and they've all been killed. Maybe you should try and do a roll shot or a tip shot. I think that'd work right now. But there's no communication. It starts to cause problems. Again, but I think that play and that hitting error was a result of bad setting choices and not running the middle. The score is 6-3, to three and we yet to run a middle attack. That's terrible. That's embarrassing. Why even have a middle if you're going to run it like this? Okay. Now what's interesting is notice here, now then a little bit more of a straighter line. Let me get my line. But there's no rhyme or reason. I want you guys to be conscious if you're in a straight line or not in a straight line. Does that make sense? Okay, let's see it. Again, good pass. I'm happy she set the middle. <laughs> okay, let's go back to that. So if she finally gets a ball, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's 10 feet off the net, and now she is choosing to set the middle. She sets it over the middle's left shoulder. The middle doesn't really have an attack. This ball should be only going back. Like, look at this nice court here. Like, that needs to be set. There's no excuses. Okay. And then if you're going to set the middle, the key with this middle is setting it through the middle. This ball is not in the middle. Okay. We Our ideal with running a two out of the middle is an up and down set. The ball has to go up and down so it's easy to hit. As soon as the ball is shooting over their shoulder, it's very difficult to hit. Instead, in that stage, we want to be running a 32. So it's a different set. Okay, that's still not bad. Okay, where is she going to put this free ball? Oh my gosh. Now let me ask you, you got to set it running up. This is the setter. Why are you going to free ball the court to the middle of the court? That's what. Oh my gosh. Like you could have literally just pushed the free ball right here. And they would have had all kinds of trouble. You could have taken out their main hitter. There's no setter there, and there's no one in area one. So one of the things we do is we give tough free balls. Again, you're missing our coaching philosophy and our, our thoughts and our culture, okay? And then here we have this really bad block, and I just did a video on that for uh, Jamie and the outside. Okay, but what's interesting for me is we allowed all of those plays to happen, okay? Okay, Charles has gotten up off his chair. I'm okay with that. Nice back set. 
why didn't you do that the last time? Now, what's great too is, hey, how simple was that set? Get it outside. She didn't do anything fancy. She hit it over the block and there was a kill. Okay, guys, um, I'm 15 minutes in. i got to end this. So I'll try and do another video. If you're interested in seeing more volleyball videos uh, or interested in having a camp run at your school, uh, visit volleyball101.com. I'll also put a link to contact me in this video in the notes section. Uh, to see more volleyball videos, visit volleyball101.com.